18. It is 18, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So pretty sure you're all newbies. Am I correct as far as that goes? Is this everyone's first conference? Yeah? Anyone been here more than one conference? Yay! <laughs> How many conferences? Two. I got you beat. Three. <laughs> So I was a customer before I started working at Tableau, and so I got to attend conference as a customer, as one of you guys, as a newbie, and then I got to come back as an employee. So totally different experience on both sides. Trust me, I'd rather be out there. <laughs> you guys are kind of scary. <laughs> Not really. Um, all right, so welcome to the neighborhood. Um, for any of you that were here to see Matt, Unfortunately, he has fallen ill, and so I'm flying solo today. I decided to, last minute, bring a little guest with me and change a few puns up. So um, Mr. Rogers is here, so he's here to keep me company. I promise I won't make too many Mr. Rogers jokes. Um, so please, please, please act neighborly, silence your tech. Put it away, slides will be available afterwards. There's nothing, you know, my slides aren't that amazing. Um, there'll be plenty of time for Q&A at the end, but if you have a burning question, raise your hand, and if I see you and pay attention to you, I'll try to get to you. Otherwise, let's save it for the end so I can ramble on through all this, all this other stuff. Um, you could point that way, I should point this way. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Okay, so what to do after Tableau Desktop is installed? I'm April Dowd, analytics consultant with professional services out in the West. Um, I was in your shoes. I was a customer before I was an employee. I've been there. I understand. Um, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks today and some guidelines as far as you know, things that I probably wish that I knew as a newbie and would have given me a leg up because I do have to admit my first Tableau dashboard was a big cross tab with conditional formatting. So, oops, um, <laughs> what do you do after Tableau desktop is installed? Kick back, have loads of fun, and learn tons. Thank you very much. <laughs> no? All right, so you gotta learn it, you gotta make it, and you have to share it. Easy. So learning it. Um, there's so much information out there on Tableau and how to learn it. Google is gonna become your best friend. Google it, it's awesome. Um, we have several different ways that you can learn Tableau. Um, and this is whether you are interested in desktop, whether you're interested in prep, or whether you're interested in server. Um, we're going to mostly focus on desktop here, but it kind of similarly applies to prep and doesn't apply to server. So first, we have training videos. Has anyone come across tableau.com slash learn free training videos? Keyword free training videos. Um, watch them all. <laughs> Go back to them, relearn them. They have so many good tips in there. And best of all, they are free. That's the great place to start. Start your journey there, get it going. It's gonna lead you wanting a little bit more. It does not cover every single scenario. Folks in the back, if you've come in, there's seats like kind of scattered in the middle. Feel free to kind of smush in there if you don't want to stand. I'm all for standing if you want to stand, though. Um, the, the free online videos are wonderful. They're updated with all the new features. They're updated in a pretty timely manner, and they break it down into bite-sized chunks for you so that you can get through the content when you need it. Next, we have live online training. So that whole college in your PJs style training where you don't actually have to brush your hair and teeth and go anywhere, but you still get to interact with somebody, this is your best bet there. Um, you don't have to physically show up anywhere. You get all the same content if you are in one of the classroom trainings. How many of you have taken an actual training? How many of you took it yesterday? 
So it's basically what you took yesterday, but it's all virtual. And it's usually spread into like smaller chunks. So instead of like a two-day training or a one-day training, it's you know three or four four-hour sessions. Um, after that, we do have classroom training, which is very popular. Go learn, make friends, be neighborly. Um, so you know, put your jeans and a T-shirt on, brush your hair, show up somewhere. Find your Tableau friends that you're going to connect with, and they're going to continue through that journey with you. Because having a buddy that you can go ask questions to is so valuable. And last but certainly not least is e-learning. This is a relatively new learning platform for us. We do have desktop 101, 201, 301. I think I said those right. One, two, and three. Um, and then they are coming out with new content all the time. So I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a Tableau prep e-learning coming out soon. So awesome content. You can go in and learn in bite-sized chunks. You can take it all at once. But the great thing is, is it's an annual type of license. So you can keep going back to it over time. So it's not a take it, go home, and two days later you're like, wait, what did that teacher say about LODs? All right, any questions on learning it? It's pretty straightforward, right? And I am totally serious. Google will be your best friend. <laughs> you can Google just about everything, and you include the word Tableau in it, and you'll find it. Um, other best friend, community. Make sure that you sign up on community and get out there and ask and answer your questions. Um, I say ask and answer because my first couple questions that I asked on community, I actually went back and answered my own question. Well, Google answered it and then I went back and answered it in community. All right, so make it. How many of you have already made a dashboard? How many of you have desktop actually installed? Okay, that's better. <laughs> How many of you have connected to data? Keep your hands up if you've made at least one viz or visualization or chart or cross tab or anything. Okay, good. We're on at least, you know, getting there. So task is by the end of October, yeah, by the end of October, you guys all should have one thing posted on Tableau Public. Just name it my first dashboard. The community is very forgiving. Um, one of the most important steps in any project is scoping it out and planning it out. Um, Tableau creates these amazing visuals. You can get in there and you can really play with your data. But if you don't scope out your project to start with and plan it out, your audience might not get it. You might have this brilliant idea about bike riding around Seattle, and you're like, I know exactly how to visualize this and put it forward. But if your end user is like, great, but why would I go look at that? Is your project going to be a success? Probably not. I keep looking over here at my dear friend, Misty. <laughs> she is one of my customers, and she's been through this with me, where we've gone through and we've actually talked and had user discussions and said, what works for you, and how do we pull it together so it's most useful for that end user? Because if it's not useful for them, then why are you building it? And I love having those conversations. It's, it's so wonderful. And I'll demo one of those, and you guys can role play as my um, stakeholders later. Um, it's so wonderful to get the user's feedback in it and see you know, how do other people see and understand that data. Because just because I understand a chart doesn't mean that my audience understands the chart in the same way that I understand it. Um, so dashboard in progress. Step one. Plan it. Um, I use all kinds of different planning software. I use pen and paper. I use a whiteboard. But I plan it out. I'm going to talk with some stakeholders here. I'm going to have some user sessions here. I'm going to connect to the data at this point. I'm going to have a working model at this point. Just have an idea and plan and write it out and set goals for yourself. Scope it. 
Um, this is more than just asking somebody, well, okay, you need a sales dashboard, great. You need to do a little bit more in depth on what that scoping actually is. It can't just be, well, it's a sales dashboard. Okay, well, is it a sales dashboard that tells you quarterly sales over the last 10 years? Is it a sales dashboard that tells you how many new customers are coming in? Is it a sales dashboard that tells you your revenue? I mean, there's so many different ways to see that sales dashboard. So you really need to get down to what exactly is it does the end user need to know and what do they need to get out of this? Because that's where you're gonna have that golden nugget, that's where you're gonna have the success, and that's really the fun part. Check it. Um, go back to your end users. Um, you know, you've, you can scope it out, you get your stakeholder buy-in, you find out what they're actually looking for. Go back to them periodically during your build and double check. Um, I started designing Tableau dashboards for faculty in a community college. And I had to keep going back to my faculty members and asking them, did I get it right? I can tell you the two faculty members that gave me the most valuable information through that was the ceramics faculty member and the English faculty member because they never look at data. And so if I could get that visualization to speak to them so that they can understand what I'm trying to do, then I knew that I had a winner. I'm not gonna go to the statistics faculty member and ask him if he understands my dashboard because he's just gonna ask me for the underlying data. He doesn't want the dashboard. So getting to that point, checking back in and knowing your audience is really gonna help you out. Polish it. Um, once you've gone through a couple of iterations of your dashboard, you really wanna get down to that polished point. There are many ways that you can do this. There's, we, we have a class on visual analytics that really kinda go over those best practices. But I most, I really like to equate this to branding. Put your personal or your corporation's brand on it. Because if you just have a dashboard that has the Tableau basics and it just has the white background and the title, it might look good. It's probably gonna tell a story and it's gonna work. But if you put your company logo in the top and you use your company branded colors and you make sure that all the charts are like formatted the same way, you don't have extra lines in there, it really gives that extra polish and people understand that that took work. And you're now presenting something that's a part of you. These are like your little babies. All my dashboards are my little babies. But having that extra step where you put that branding and polish on it, it shows credibility. It shows that you're there, you're the professional, and you're the expert on this visualization. So you wanna present yourself that way. Um, you can think of it as you're gonna go to a job interview. Are you gonna go to a job interview in your jeans and a t-shirt with your hair, you know, spiking up and all wonky? Probably not. You're probably gonna put on a little bit of a, oops, you're gonna put on a little sport coat, you're gonna, you know, dress up, you're not gonna show up in your loafers. You know, you're gonna make sure that you look good. So have, think about that dashboard as a reflection of you. Make your dashboard look good. Don't go crazy on the colors. Project management. Um, I love whiteboard, pen and paper. Um, it just free flowing how it is. Um, the key here is use what works for you. Okay, have a plan, try to stick to it, write it out. There's plenty of tools out there. Um, I also love OneNote and Misty can attest to that. Just because she showed up, I'm gonna pick on her all day today. <laughs> Um, I love OneNote. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff in OneNote, and I probably use it for things that it's not meant to be used for. But Microsoft Project is another easy one that most companies have, but pen and paper, old school, always works. Um, it's far better to have everything organized than not. Think about any work project that you've ever done. You, you have to plan it out, right? I'm not saying you have to go agile or have scrum and all that other stuff. You just have to make a plan, stick to it. Because um, if you don't make a plan, you might end up a little bit fragmented. And your project can get away from you if you end up fragmented. 
So you have to stick to what was that scope and what is it that my audience truly wants to understand. If you give them the kitchen sink, they're gonna get overwhelmed. Give them everything in bite-sized chunks, let them process through it, and stick to that original plan. If you have an idea of a release date, you're like, I need to have this dashboard done by December 1st because that's when we're gonna publish it and it's gonna go out to everyone. And then all of a sudden there's five new requirements and you're like, I really want those things to make it in there. Start planning for iteration too. Because one thing that you have to think about is a dashboard should be iterative. If your dashboard is an iterative, it just, here's the information, wipe my hands of it, walk away, it grows stale and people stop using it. If you make it iterative and people start using it and consuming it, they're gonna come up with more questions that that same data set could answer and you just modify your dashboard slightly to answer the new questions. Great, we've been answering those questions, now I have these questions. Great, let's just push that on through. So your dashboard shouldn't really be done. All right, quick information about scoping, executive buy-in. Whatever that looks like for your company, do it. Because <laughs> if they don't buy into what you're doing, and because they're the ones that are ultimately gonna have the say on most projects, get the buy-in. Executive doesn't have to mean the VP of the company, the C-suite or anything like that. It could just mean a mid-level manager. So whoever is that kind of person in charge of the department that you're designing for, get their buy-in. Get them to buy into what you're doing. Um, next, have a vision. What is that overarching theme of what the dashboard is trying to tell you? What exactly are you going to modify everything to go? Bleh. All right, just scratch that whole last sentence. I don't know what I was even saying. Um, are there specific items that have to be on the dashboard? So I've come across so many people that are just like, it has to have this, this one little piece of nugget thing. Find out what that is. Because if you don't have that, then they're just not gonna use it because that's really what they feel important having on there. That's, that's what they want. Um, Totally lost my place. See, that's what happens. You guys all forgive me for losing my place, right? <laughs> all right, so specific items, make sure that they're on there. Have a vision, know where you're going with it. Get that executive buy-in and find out what type of dashboard you're actually going to build. Do you guys all know that there's different types of dashboards? No, not really. So if you want to know more about scoping before I go into types of dashboards, Tara Morton is doing an awesome talk on Thursday. It's called Start at the Beginning, Gathering Requirements for Dream Dashboards. Thursday, 12.30. So she's gonna talk a lot more about this whole thing because you truly could spend way more than an hour on just scoping and gathering requirements. Um, Tara Morton, start at the beginning, gathering requirements for dream, da dream dashboards. Cool. All right, so type of dashboard. Basically, we have three. We have your strategic dashboards, we have your tactical dashboards, and we have your operational dashboards. Know which one you're gonna be doing. So when you think about that type of dashboard you wanna design, you're also gonna think about the audience level of that dashboard. Those strategic dashboards, that's most likely gonna be your executive dashboards. That's gonna to go to the C-suite, your VPs. That's that high level annual planning. Okay, rolled up numbers, not a whole lot of filters. It's just main KPIs, get it out there, get the information easy to use. Keeping it simple. Um, tactical, we're going about mid-level manager, 
you know, people that have some responsibility, they need a little bit more information to be able to make decisions. These dashboards need to be actionable. You need to be able to see, okay, my sales dipped down last month, why and what can I do about it? So we're talking more quarterly, monthly type of reporting on this one that has key actions that somebody can actually go back and, t and do something about if there's anything going on. Last one is operational. This is that totally granular, almost down to row level dashboard. These are those ones that Joe Cubicle sitting out there, he wants those. He wants to know that so he has up to the minute and he can get through and get his information quickly. Be careful with operational dashboards because you don't want to do information overload. Just because they might need it more granular doesn't mean that you have to just give them a giant text table that has the entire data set in it. You still have to think through that design, you have to think through what your charts are saying, and you have to think through what they're actually going to use this for. Questions? See, I lied, I told you I wasn't gonna ask questions throughout the whole thing, and I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to Tableau Desktop, and we're going to pretend that you guys are my audience. It's not really hard to pretend, right? You guys are kind of quiet, so you just gotta laugh a little bit more. Um, so to cue this up, I am an analyst, and you guys came to me and said that you needed some information about bank closures. So you guys gave me a spreadsheet that had bank closures since 2000. This is actually real. I found it on data.gov. Um, so it's, um, don't judge me on my dashboard. This is what I would actually present if I was going to go through and ask these questions of my stakeholders. I'm not gonna show them a polished dashboard. I'm gonna show them a couple charts. Um, so we have two charts here. We have one chart that gives us how many banks closed each year since 2000. We have another chart that has the exact same information, but this is how many banks have closed since 2000. So my question to you guys is when you're talking about you wanted to be able to analyze how many banks were closing and you wanted to see how many of those banks were closing in your areas each year, were you talking about chart A or were you talking about chart B? Anyone? A, why A? Exactly, you can see exactly what closed each year without that stair step, or it's, it's actually, it's a waterfall chart, <laughs> to be precise, but without that stair step, it's easier to see the difference in those bars. Does anyone have B that they prefer? Why do you prefer B? Gives you the total number of banks that have closed since 2000 without having to do that math in your head. So this is an example of something that I would take to those stakeholders on one of those feedback meetings and ask them to clarify what did you intend when you asked for this and which one of these speaks best to you. There is no right or wrong answer. This is how did that end user interpret this data and which one is gonna be the best one going forward. So second example, You could, yep, yeah, you could do a cumulative, you could do a line chart, there's a bunch of different charts to do to accomplish the same thing. Yeah, and you can merge more things together. Um, I did on here, you can do a highlight action. You could actually give them both charts if you wanted to, depending on what they wanted. Um, this also kind of, you know, you can color these too and say, you know, did it increase or decrease each year over year? Um, there's so many different ways to go with this. So it's always, that's why it's always best to go back to your audience and say like, what did you mean? You asked for how many banks closed each year. What did you mean? Um, so this is my second ask. 
sometimes people can ask things that are a bit ambiguous. So you wanted to rank bank closures by states. What type of rank are you looking for? How many of you knew that there's more than one type of rank? Did I blow anyone's mind that there's more than one type of rank? <laughs> so there are, there's different types of rank. The most traditional rank is the one that you will see right here in this rank total closed column. This is bucketing those things together, so if they have the exact same value, they're gonna be given the exact same ranking number. You can do that by also doing the rank dense. The rank dense gives you that same, same values have the same ranking number, but it doesn't skip values. And what I mean by that, if you look, we have, I should probably here, let me make this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, where's 11 and eight? So that rank skips the 11 and eight because we have two sevens, so that skips eight and goes to nine. The rank dense does not skip that eight, it just has two sevens, one eight, one nine, one ten, eleven. So there's a difference there, and it's very subtle, but what did your audience intend like what is it that they want and how is it going to help them um, the last one here is the rank unique which it doesn't matter if the values are the same it's going to rank them all exactly the same anyone find that a little misleading yeah definitely so just be aware there's different ways that people can look at it so which one would you all prefer The dense? How many of you say standard? How many of you say dense? How many of you say unique? How many of you say just show me the number of records? <laughs> I don't care about the rank, show me the number of records and sort it. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. I've had people say that, just I don't care about the rank, just show me the number of records and sort it. Okay. It's easy for me. The rank is a table calculation, so that's easy too. So my second question to you all is, does that ranking matter when you're looking at this data if you have banks that were closed and not acquired versus banks that were just closed and acquired? Yes? So would you wanna see those ranked separately or would you wanna see those ranked together? Together? Right, if it was closed and acquired, it doesn't necessarily mean it went away, it just, the bank changed the name. It's still serving the community. So it tells a different story. So these are all things and examples that you guys can use when you go back to your customers, which are your end users, internal customers, external customers, doesn't matter who, but whoever is consuming your dashboard is your customer. Find out, do you want to rank it with those that are acquired versus not acquired? Or do you want that to be a whole separate analysis that we go down a rabbit hole of to find out what the frequency of acquired versus not acquired is? Questions? No? Okay. The idea with those confirmation sessions are that you want to have a conversation. And when you're having that conversation, it's okay to pause and let the silence fill the room. Silence can be your friend. Just because the group is quiet does not mean that they're not listening to you. You guys are awfully quiet, but you're listening to me, right? Right? Um, so, <laughs> practice that patience, take a deep breath, let them think. You don't want them to be making snap de decisions. You want them to think through and really give you what it is that they're trying to get at. Because 
this is going to be something that they're going to end up looking at on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, and they're going to have to keep going back to. So you want them to like it. You want them to find it useful. Let them think, make them feel understood and listened to, and then go back and make your changes. If you really want to blow their minds, make your changes in front of them. Anyone ever coded in front of somebody or typed up a Word document in front of somebody or created a Tableau workbook in front of us? It is terrifying, right? You're trying to write an email and somebody's looking over your shoulder. It is terrifying. Any teachers in the room? No? You guys do this all the time. You're like writing on the whiteboard all the time in front of people. I am terrified of that. <laughs> I have to do it all the time, but I misspell words. I do things wrong way. It's OK. You're human. The fact that you're trying and you're doing it in front of them, it's going to show them that little spark of magic. And they're going to get it. And then you're going to start this whole other conversation of, well, instead of the bar chart going horizontally, can it go vertically? And what if we change it into a line chart? And then you know, six hours later, you're ordering dinner in and cocktails and trying to figure out where the session went wrong. It's all good. Just design with them in the room. It's not that big of a deal, right? Share it. Um, if you build it and you don't send it to somebody, if you don't share it, meh. You have to share it, right? That's the whole idea. Think about this whole conference. We love to share. We share in all kinds of information. We share our data. We share business everywhere. Just share it. Get it out in front of people. Get their feedback. You're going to learn something. If you miss the mark, fine. Iterate on it. Come back. Republish. Find out what you went wrong. Anyone know how to share a Tableau dashboard? How do you share? Tableau Server, Tableau Online. Um, Tableau Server is on-premise. Tableau Online is the exact same thing. It's just in the cloud, somewhere up there in the cloud. Um, you can send your Twibix. Um, if anyone hasn't heard that before, it's called Twibix. And if it doesn't have the X, it's called Twib. Anyone know the difference between Twib and Twibix? Twibix includes the, the local files of the data in it and your data connections in it. So that way, um, if you just send the Twib and you've connected to an Excel spreadsheet that's on your computer, you send it to somebody in the back there and they don't have that Excel file in the exact same folder mapping, they can't use your dashboard. Um, Tableau Public. Anyone posted anything on Tableau Public? Anyone perused Tableau Public for ideas? Steal like an artist. <laughs> Seriously, find examples. It's all good. We all share. Um, well, caveat on sending those Twibixes or Twibs, whichever you choose. Think about security first and foremost. There's security built into Tableau Server and Tableau Online. There is security built into most people's email systems, um, but just FYI, you are sharing data. Think about the security. Think about cloud manage, file management, shared folders. Um, whoever you send it to is either going to have to have Tableau Desktop or Tableau Reader as well. So think through that processing before you just send the file over. Questions? So if your data, if you've connected to a data source that's in a shared environment, like a SQL Server or Oracle database, if you're connecting live, whoever gets that Tableau workbook is going to need access to that server environment or the user 
name and password for it. If you're sharing and using an extract, you do not need that shared credentials. They won't be able to refresh it without the credentials, but they will be able to see the extract that you've created. Yeah, so when you publish the dashboard up, um, if somebody's looking at it in Tableau Reader, online, server, or Tableau Public, they cannot, unless you've given them permission, edit your dashboard. So you're just sharing the dashboard as is. They won't be able to move things around. There are server permissions within online and server that you can modify to allow them to save a copy and make their own edits. Uh, but typically when you just share that URL with them, it says go, go look at it here, it is just the pretty picture, there's interactivity so that you know, if you've done highlight actions or clickable actions, they'll be able to do all of that, but they won't be able to make any changes. Yes, you can still get to the underlying data, again, depending on permissions. So you can lock it down so somebody cannot download the data from it, or you can have them able to um, get the data out of it. It depends on your level of security at the company and how you want the end users to get it. Right. So Tableau Reader is a desktop application that's free. Um, so anyone can download it, install it on their computer. And the, it's updated periodically, um, pretty much at the same cadence that desktop is updated. And so when you send that, when you send that Twivix to somebody, they'll open it up using Reader, and it'll look just like it would if you were on Tableau Public or server or anything like that. They're not gonna have all of the functionality to create new sheets or new dashboards or anything. They'll just be able to interact with it as you would in server or public. So um, if you are presenting from your desktop, what you can do is way up at the top, there is the presentation button, and that will change your dashboard into full screen and present it so you don't get all the extra junk around it. Okay, and you're able to extract your Yes. You can extract down to PDF. Um, there is a way that you can write some code and do a PowerPoint one. Um, I would follow that on community though, because there's some ideas in there about downloading to PowerPoint. So go search some, some of those ideas and vote them up on community. But um, Tableau download to PDF is currently in the product. Good question. Um, so this, this is what he was asking for is this size here. Um, best practice is to have a fixed size dashboard because you are saying exactly what size you want to view this as and it's going to give that visual going forward. Um, I did automatic here because I'm presenting on a giant screen. I just wanted it to scale up. Um, automatic sizing when you publish it to server, depending on it, it won't cache any of the images of anything. So it won't pre-warm it, and it'll have to reload everything fresh every single time. So depending on how you have your dashboard set up, how the data is, and how it's performing, automatic could work perfectly fine for you. But if you want a really speedy dashboard that can have that um, caching capability, you want a fixed size. Um, so 
there's also the range size. So you can fix it and say it has to be 1366 by 900, or you can say it can be any size, but not any smaller than 700 by 600. That would be more like the range. So if you know that you, know, you have 10 visuals, then you, you're like, it's not going to look good if somebody has a screen this size. You can set that minimum and leave the maximum open, or you can create a minimum and a maximum. Yes. So um, his question was around mobile viewing. We do have device preview, and it's built in here, so you have your exact same dashboard. And you can just say, I want a phone layout, and you can create the phone layout right here. So once Tableau recognizes that it's a phone reading it, it'll switch to that layout, and you don't have to save a separate dashboard. It's not a separate URL or anything like that. Yeah, typically when you do the device layout, you, you don't design for a rectangle necessarily. Most people, when they pull up their phone and they're starting to look through it, they scroll up. So you might want to think about you know, stacking your visuals one on top of each other so they can be scrolled through in a single hand. So think about that busy person that wants to quickly check their metrics before getting, going into a meeting. You're not typically going to hold your phone this way and like crank your hands around and everything. You're going to hold your phone this way and scroll through it. So um, play with it and test it. They do have Tableau Labs downstairs, and they're doing a lot of awesome stuff about mobile layouts. So if you have specific use cases and stuff, I would go down and check that out because um, they are making some changes. And there's some automatic, there's some automatic, automatic pieces of it, too, that are happening that will just automatically flip your dashboard into a mobile layout if you have it enabled. So go check those out. We're kind of new to desktop, and one of the things that we're struggling with is getting it to load quick enough to keep our customers happy. Um, if it's not loading like within a minute, is that a symptom of too much stuff put in there, or the way the stuff is put in there, or a combination? Of it could be a combination of both. It could also be um, your data. Are you connecting to a live data connection, or are you connecting on like an extract? Both. 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 And I wonder if it's the cross tab thing you mentioned. Does that affect the OPC? It does. So if you have a giant text table, standard Excel cross tab, basically, that is probably the least efficient dashboard in Tableau, or visualization in Tableau because Tableau will render the entire thing even if it's hidden in the scroll part. So if you have a million rows in that, Tableau is trying to render all of that to increase your user experience. Do you, do you limit that in Tableau or do you limit the original data set? Is the requirement to have a cross tab? That's where I would start. Is I would start looking at is there a better way to show the data? instead of let's just try to make the cross tab perform. Yeah, I, I would go back and ask, can we show this to you in a bar chart and enable you to get the data, underlying data in it? Or does it have to be displayed in this format? I would go back to the visual part and say, you know, are we really showing this the best way? Four. That is my goal. How many elements do you put on a dashboard? I try to stick to four. Um, that's not easy to do at all. You have to think about the brain, and you have to think about your audience. How many data elements can your audience understand when they look at the dashboard? Usually, it's less than eight. 
I mean, if you add some scrolling and you do some other stuff, you can probably put more, but um, if you look at the Tableau best practices on performance, it says four visits. If you publish it on Tableau Public and you make it visible, anyone can see it. If you're publishing to online or server, it's dependent on the permissions that you've set up in Tableau Pub, um, Server. So you wanna go back and double check that. Um, permissions can be set based on project folders. They can be set based on individual dashboards. So as long as the user has access in and access to the content, they'll be able to see it. So if you're on Tableau Desktop, and say I wanted to put this into my PowerPoint presentation, um, the best way to go is go to Dashboard, Copy Image, and then go to PowerPoint, and hit Control-V, oh, come on, paste. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> what if, like, the, the, the scroll bar? So Your sc it'll, it'll show the scroll bar. It'll, it just takes the screenshot. It, you won't be able to scroll. Same thing with PowerPoint, or um, PDF, sorry. I'm all for dashboard actions. So her question was the pros and cons of highlighting versus filtering. Um, I have challenged many of my customers to keep their filters to three. Um, yeah, I see some faces there. <laughs> if, you're, if you're displaying, so if we go back to this, right? If you're displaying each of those states on here, why not make that the filter? They click on it, you don't have to have the pick list filter on there, you're already displaying it. I wanna just click on it and have everything else filter. That's a much better user experience than having to go to a pick list and pick, go down and click on that and then this, this visual over here kinda of goes away because it only has one value in it. So, I mean, I definitely prefer you know, easing people over to those actions rather than the filters. Um, if you go down all of the filters and let's say you have 15 filters on your dashboard and then you want relevant values on those so that as you're picking them, your values kind of minimalize and minimalize, every single one of those has to run an additional query to get what's relevant and what's relevant and what's relevant. So you're adding load time in there and that can go into poor performance which can go into a negative user experience. If you make it kind of fun and interactive where people can touch it and play around with it, it invites them to get, like, get their hands dirty. It's like the kids' play museum. You don't take the kids to like MoMA. You take the kids to the kids' museum so that they can get their hands in the slime and the gunk and the bubbles and everything else and they can touch it. You want them to like, reach out and touch their data and click around. There's a survey. If you like me, great. If you don't, don't fill it out. <laughs> um, the presentations are all loaded into the TC content stuff. You'll get a notification at the end of conference and you'll have access to all kinds of fun information. Um, they do record the majority of the sessions, so if you've missed a session that you really wanted, go look at the recordings post-conference and, and get in and do that, definitely. Um, I would say you can, Oh, I totally, oh, there it goes. <laughs> totally messed up my presentation. Um, 
you know, it's, it, there, there's so much to learn here. Just go explore, learn, absorb so much. Um, don't overwhelm yourselves this week. You're new, let it sink in. Um, if you see me around, I've got my little badge white lanyard or anyone with a white lanyard, just ask us questions. We're here for you. So with that, adieu.